we're hearing a lot in terms of uh, comments on the yen from the Japanese government uh, today. What do you make of these latest ones from the finance minister? Do you think we're going to actually see some intervention? I think it's very unlikely at this point. Um, intervention in the past has been costly and ultimately inefficient. Okay. Um, what about action from the BOJ? A lot of pressure coming from the government uh, for the BOJ to do more. There certainly is. And I think the problem that we have here and part of the reason for this leadership contest arising is that we've had a severe problem in terms of inflation targeting, getting that pushed through. Um, Khan is proving extremely reluctant to take any steps on this at all. He's very tied in with the old sort of bureaucracy. The bureaucratic approach is to not move. Um, and Azawa potentially could challenge that. Do you think Ozawa actually has a chance here? I mean, when he goes when he goes for the leadership on September 14th? It's really interesting. It's much more open than one would think because if you look at the breakdown of the DPJ, um, inside the DPJ, it's roughly a third Khan, a third Hatayama, and a third um, Ozawa. And Hatayama's basically thrown his weight behind Ozawa. So within the DPJ itself, you're looking at maybe sort of two-thirds support for Ozawa. Um, the difference is that that accounts for around 824 votes. Uh, there are another 400 votes, which are party supporters and local assembly, and they're not keen on Ozawa at all. So now, maybe you're looking at a 50-50. Okay, so if Ozawa were to unseat Khan, he would be the sixth prime minister in three years. Now, surely that can't be a good thing. I mean, are his policies any better for growth than Khan's? I think we can assume that if he does what he says he's going to do, which is to go back and, and really try to implement the original manifesto as stated by the DPJ, then it will be extremely positive. But obviously there are huge question marks over whether he will in fact do that. Now, we have heard from the DPJ in the last uh, yesterday. They started to announce stimulus proposals, and today they're going to be discussing those uh, amongst the ministers. Uh, something like $10 billion is all that they have left in their budget to do that. But it seems more of a move to kind of say to the BOJ, we're going to do our bit. Now, will you please do more? Is that your take on it? It may be. It may be. I think that the problem that we have is, as you say, um, the funds are lacking. And the problem that Japan ultimately faces is that monetary policy settings are wrong. So we have very, very ultra-tight monetary policy. We have sort of loose fiscal policy. And therefore, you're in persistent deflation. So it's very, very difficult to actually move or to do anything when you're stuck in that situation. So gaining money from other sources or attempting to raise tax revenues or so on, you know, that's not really workable under the current structure. And unfortunately, under Khan, you're looking at that continuing. Under Azawa, you may have a chance of success, you may not. Interesting. I wonder what your longer term outlook is for the yen. I had an analyst, a hedge fund manager, Peru Saxena, on the program a little bit earlier in the week, and he's predicting really a funding crisis in Japan that he says it could trigger a possible devaluation of the currency. He's predicting that in the next two, three years. Yeah, I think that's, that is possible. I mean, under the current situation, the debt situation in Japan is so poor that if action isn't taken, um, then eventually the yen will cease to be a safe, safe haven currency. So that is possible. All right. Lisa Fox, strategist from Japan Invest, thanks very much for your insights this morning.